Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And here comes the West to screw up anime. Oh well, yeah. Uh, most likely. Most likely. Possibly, maybe. We're going to talk about this. We had a lot of people, a lot of people send us links. Yeah, my friend Sarah sent this to me over. To, actually, you already knew about it. I, point, but. I knew about it. Uh, I know, man, I had like three or four people send it to me on, on DMs. Yeah, Netflix is offering a full Tokyo Anime School scholarship with living expenses open to foreigners. Now, um, this is what's going to be interesting because, you know, we've been talking about this with, with Netflix and look, I'm not necessarily knocking Netflix, but their definition of what is and what is not anime is mm -hmm. very, uh, fluid. Yeah. Uh, basically <laughs> any kind of cartoon is now all of a sudden anime uh -huh. and, um, you know, even Wired called it out. They, they're like, you know, Netflix's anime is super weird. They're, they're pulling, uh, you know, putting teams together in other countries and producing quote unquote anime. And we saw Crunchyroll. I was just going to bring that up, but you, yeah. You know, Crunchyroll producing their own anime, such wonderful hits uh, like X Arm. Yep, that's beautiful. It's clearly anime. And uh, High Guardian Spice, which we still haven't seen anywhere, mm -hmm. it just kind of disappeared. And, um, you know, meanwhile, there's talks about uh, Sony going global to take on Netflix, but at least Sony seems to be. Kind of doing it right well, we had for that, now. We had that chicken crunchy roll too that was like basically telling, you know, Japan and stuff how they need to change everything about. Yeah. We love anime. Uh, but there's demand for anime, but you need to change everything about it to, to match our sensibilities in California. I mean, America. Yeah. And that's what's going on. I think a lot of these, you know, production houses overseas are listening to uh, woke warriors and uh, we're seeing a lot of, you know, watered down stuff the first produced. the first rule of woke warriors is don't listen to woke warriors yeah they need to not listen and be like look follow the money i mean the only hope i really have for sony because you know i'm concerned about sony with censorship because we saw what happened yeah. with playstation again they moved operations for gaming in california and look what happened well that's the thing as soon as you do do you notice the trend here people yeah yeah um you know but demon slayer made a shit ton of money mm -hmm. you know and that that's our our hope right here is demon slayer made a shit ton of money but if you haven't seen it go watch it it's very good and nintendo's kicking your ass right now mm -hmm. in gaming because they're not censoring stuff like you are so maybe there's something to this maybe there's something to this but this is a little concerning i mm -hmm. guess that uh netflix is is gonna send foreigners to japan to because i i saw well, I'm the, sure japan loves that too oh my god they're gonna come in and they're gonna tell them how to change anime here come the gaijin everybody all right um so before we get into it any further please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants guys we're over 176 000 subs hoping for 200 000 soon uh we do talk about anime we talk about comics we talk about pop culture gaming whatever interests us that day and this was posted on valentine's day so we didn't get to it that day because we actually took a day off kind of kind of yeah <laughs> kind of took a day off we don't do that very often but um yeah so this article is coming from japan today pretty much as soon as it arrived in japan netflix made anime a major pillar of its content uh no doubt emboldened by the success of anime found on streaming platforms outside japan can netflix i interrupt you for a second yeah yeah it's, it's successful because that's the kind of stories people want to see right if you dick with it they're not going to want to watch it that's right. the point you take lessons from them don't go over and try to change what they do learn from them and be better yeah, well, that's that's just it. Netflix, I mean, they they bid high. They got, uh, you know, Neon Genesis Evangelion, even though there was a lot of uh, pushback from anime fans. They're like, they're going to do a terrible job with this. And they did botch the translation somewhat, as I understand it. I didn't watch Netflix version. I watched parts of it and I'm like, eh. You eh, stuck with the, you stayed, you stayed eh. pure. I stayed pure. I did. Uh, but yeah, they, they basically found out, you know, Netflix is looking for as much content as they can get. They're like, hey, this anime thing, this is really taken off. Let's make more. In fact, let's not just bring anime to the platform. Let's create anime. And I heard that before, too, that they were, you know, putting together studios in you know, other countries to create more and more anime content. And it looks like it's all just kind of gelling together. Well, that's what's going on with Disney, too. Uh, what's kicking your ass? Anime. Quick. Go do an anime-based Star Wars show. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's, oh, anime is hot now. So now we're going to get we're gonna get all kinds of, like, American anime But, yeah, it's not stuff. anime is hot because it's good, not because you dicked with it. As soon yeah. as you dick with it, it's going to be just as crappy as what you were doing, which is why people were going to anime in the first place. 
So um, this is coming from a WIT studio, best known for the first three seasons of Attack on Titan. They've announced that the formation of the uh, Animator Academy hosted at the uh, Sasayuri Video Training Institute in Tokyo. The program will be a six month course with classes held five days a week and following completion, students will be retained as subcontracted animators for a Netflix original anime produced by WIT or Production IG. Eh, that's kind of iffy, Production IG is kind of eh. Uh, so how much will the course cost students? Not a single yen. Netflix is footing the bill as a scholarship and is even pledging to help students out with their living expenses during the program. Well, I would hope so, considering how they're going over there to take classes to work for you. Yeah, so this is, I, mean, I want to talk about that because we can talk about the money in it too, or the lack of money in it. And uh -huh. this is like, okay, you think you're living the dream, right? Yeah. Do you know what animators in Japan actually get paid? They don't get paid very much. No. They really don't. But they have to work um, a lot. So Netflix is looking for about 10 people. On the plus side, that also means small class sizes with more opportunities for student-teacher interaction. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, we've got some folks from Ghibli, etc. cetera. Uh, the first course will start in April and run until September. Applicants must be between 18 and 25. Oh, I was going to say that. I was going to joke. You have to be young because they're going to burn you out. I yes. was going to make that joke, and then I didn't even see that there was an age limit on it. Yes. That's fun. Uh, between 18 and 25, <laughs> we know we can kick your ass, and you will look like you're, you're 55 by the time you get done. That's right. By the time you get done with this program, you're going to look 55. We're going to crunch the life out of you. Uh, while Japanese residency is required, non-Japanese citizens are welcome to apply and full Japanese language fluency is not a must as long as applicants are able to have everyday conversations. So you have to be able to speak Japanese, Japanese too. Somewhat, yeah. I mean, I'm functional, sorry. Okay, functional I'm Japanese. sorry. To have everyday conversations in their language, you have to be pretty fluent you i mean well you know i'm sorry as someone who's been to france and stuff it, it doesn't work if you just can spit one or two words out yeah um for what i love this for what animators in japan don't make money they only exactly. earn three thousand yen per day including overtime uh that's why the price just went up yeah too bad animators in japan live below the poverty line jobs give no health benefits no insurance majority have to live with other animators and community houses to cover basic expenses this is true um, you know, and it's, it's, it's so sad. That so why can't Netflix just save the money and just go hire those people and pay them better? You know, Crunchyroll said they were going to do that too. Yeah. The money went to that. And the money went to High Guardian Spice. Um, that would be the most logical thing. We covered a, a, a Kickstarter a couple of months ago where they were going to hire Japanese animators, pay them better than they were getting paid, uh, in Japan to do a music video. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, that's a very small start, but I think that, uh, yeah, if you have the right people and you pay them well, you know, you could get some some top shelf talent and maybe, you know, not have them burn out and actually, you know, not want to uh, quit yeah. by the time they're 26 years old or whatever. But yeah, I mean, this has been called out a lot. You know, Wired, again, called this out a couple months ago that there's something really weird about an the Netflix's definition of anime. And I don't think you're going to have... A whole lot of foreigners applying but it does show that netflix's view of anime is very mm -hmm. uh, global it's very no i'll say I, I wouldn't even say global i'd say their view uh, uh it's not just them crunchy roll too apparently is very um western uh, uh, just flat out they, they they want this stuff it's like i love everything you're doing here's how i'm gonna change it that is a very that is a very Western woke warrior way of looking right. at things. Right. And yes. meanwhile, people that are the actual anime fans, they don't want them to. They want the they just want more stuff brought over and translated, you know, faithfully. Um, or if you're gonna do stuff like that, they want you to make shows that are like those shows, good characters, you know, sometimes wacky story elements, but they have like good characters written well. Uh it's a you know, they want the, the whole idea that you don't just get handed some mantle, you have to earn it and things like mm. that. And that's not how they present these shows in the west and, no. and all you're doing is like everything about you now let's change it that's yeah what, that's what this screams like to me and yeah we know what's going to happen we're basically going to get you know if if netflix starts pushing forward with more western style anime it's very possible we get uh, well animated steven universe type shows. right because they're sending people over there <clears> and I'm, i would hope my hope is that they're sending people over there to actually learn you know, to keep it consistent with what they, they not just the art style, but how the storytelling methods and things like that. But I, I, I doubt that highly knowing what we've been seeing lately, what we've been given. I really strongly doubt that you yeah. look pretty, but it'll still be the same shit. It, it'll look pretty. It might not even look pretty. Well, yeah, again, look, true. look at X arm. 
it might not even look pretty. I mean, this is again, this is coming from uh, what was her name, Joanne Wag, I think her name was, uh, who was in charge at, at Crunchyroll. And, oh, you have that, yeah. Um, but well, no, I remember reading about it. But but she said, yeah, that this is. She basically was whispering in their ear and telling them, this is what the West wants. Right. They want more stuff like this and High Guardian Spice. Uh, that's not what they want. No. You know, again, look at what's doing well globally. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is what the West wants. This is what everybody wants. Yes. Uh, people, and that's that's even in this article from Wired, you know, the, one of the last paragraphs, he said, you know, toward the end of, end of the interview with the guy from Netflix, um, he's saying about how Netflix has been poaching artists from a French institute to make anime. And uh, I tell him it's interesting, the internationalization of anime by this big tech-driven media conglomerate, because in America... A lot of people watch anime to escape, maybe to Japan or some otaku vision for it. Japan is a different country with a different culture. Right. Stop trying to tell Japan what their culture should be. Right. Its media might resonate on a visceral human level, but sometimes in a welcome turn, nothing about an anime will remind me of my life at all. Oh, wow. Uh, Sakurai says as if he's never considered that. He never considered that. So this is the guy who's in charge of anime at Netflix. And he's like, you mean, you mean Westerners w- want Japanese entertainment? Yeah, you they can't do. just hire French people to make anime? No. What? You don't say. You don't say. So yeah, I I don't know. I don't know how this is gonna go. I think the fact that you have to speak pretty decent Japanese uh is gonna be a deterrent for a lot of people. I was just thinking about Crunch too and Netflix because they were talking to the, the person that's over like in charge of Netflix. I'm pretty sure it was the Netflix person. And they were always talking about how that you, when you work for Netflix, you're expected to work. Yeah. And, you know, they, they were joking. I, I want to say it was a Netflix person, but they were like saying about how when, when you want people back in their desk after there's a vaccine, and he's like, the next day, ha ha. And he's like, no, I'm kidding. But I, I'm pretty I sure <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's Netflix. Well, they got in trouble for outsourcing uh, to a couple of animation studios in the Philippines. They were really cracking. Oh, that, that was them. Yeah, that yeah, was them. They, were really, they weren't paying yeah, fairly and yeah. everything else. Yeah. So, I mean, they produce, because look, they're producing a lot of content, so they're going to do it as as quickly and cheaply as possible. And, and we heard with, like, um, when they were talking about, like, it was Bob Chapik talking at one of the investor calls. People asked him, is it quantity over quality? And he basically said, well, the key is to get new subscribers and keep the views coming. It's unique new content all the time. Yeah. So that's, what the, that's the mindset behind Netflix and Disney and these streaming services. It's not about how good it is. It's about how cheap and fast can we crank the shit out. Yeah, which is why, you know, we all we see these these corners kind of being cut on on the animation now people talk about you know why is the animation as good as it used to be why are we using uh you know flash animation why are we and it's because it's cheaper to produce mm-hmm. you know it's cheaper to make teen titans go than it is to make teen titans right um which is unfortunate because the original teen titans was freaking awesome but well i guess why yeah i guess why we got what we got and it's anime because it's got cartoons and big eyes and blue hair yeah, bean mouth is not anime <laughs> so anyway are we gonna wrap this one up yep so there we go, guys. The West is coming. The West is coming for your 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 Weeboo stuff. Yay. All right. See ya. Bye. <laughs>